Welcome to Hofstra Today. We'll host a live spring-themed egg hunt to ring in the new season. We spoke with some Hofstra seniors about their film capstone projects. And we take a look at the upcoming Zarb store right here on campus. All that and more at and around Hofstra Today. Welcome to Hofstra today. It's good to have you here. My name is Caitlin Bancroft. And I'm Amelia Sack. Caitlin, we begin today's show with some breaking news. The performers for Hofstra's Music Fest have officially been announced. So we have Cupcake and Ski Mask Slump God, as well as some uh, Hofstra Local performers artists. opening yeah. up. Yeah. So how are we feeling? I'm very excited. You know, I mentioned to you before that I'd never been to Fall Fest before, and I've never been to Music Fest before. So I went to Fall Fest, and I'm going to Music Fest. You know, I'm checking off all the boxes senior year, yes. getting in all the stuff. So I'm very excited. Yeah, I mean, you have to. I'm also pretty excited. Um, I know some of the artist songs, so it's going to be cool to see them live. Uh, and with that, you know, there's going to be some warm weather. It's starting to warm up here warm in Hempstead. Warm weather makes all the difference. So so I hope we have a nice, sunny, warm day for Music Fest. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. And we have some events to look forward to right here on campus. So we're going to get into those now. So on Friday, April 14th, the School of Health Professions and Human Services is hosting a lunchtime walk in honor of National Public Health Week. The walk is part of the Steps Plus Health and Fitness Challenge. Students can join the one and a half mile walk by meeting at the clock tower in front of CB Star at 12.10 p.m. No advanced registration is required. The Office of Commuting Student Services and Community Outreach are hosting Pride and Plant on Saturday, April 15th. Students will have the opportunity to volunteer and plant flowers around the local community. The event will take place from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Advanced registration is required on Get Involved HU. And for more information, students can email commuters at hofstra.edu. The Hofstra University Museum of Art is celebrating National Slow Art Day, a day of admiring art pieces for more than a short period of time before moving on to the next. In honor of this, they are hosting an exhibit entitled, When We All Stand. The exhibit is being held on Saturday, April 15th, and tickets are $15 at the door for the public or free for museum members. Tickets are limited to 15 people, so make sure to grab yours quick. Do you love clothes, jewelry, and other fashionable accessories at a low price that you can buy without having to leave campus? Sign me up. Let's all be sure to check out the Eid Bazaar coming to Hofstra USA throughout the months of April and May. The event is free to the public and opens April 8th. Be sure to check it out. With the spring holidays and festivities right around the corner, us here at Hofstra Today decided to do something extra sweet. Let's head over to Gabe Janes for an extra special festive game. Thanks, Caitlin, and welcome to the very first ever live Hofstra Today egg hunt. We have placed over 100 eggs throughout the first floor of the Herbert School of Communications, and we have two contestants here who go on the hunt for them. With us today are field reporters Jake Epstein and Sarah Ng. How are you guys feeling about this competition? Eggtastic. <laughs> love it. I'm excited. I love egg hunts, and did them growing up, ready to do it now. I'm so excited for both of you. Here are the rules. You will each get a basket to collect your eggs. There are some hidden both inside and outside of our studio, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled. The person who collects the most eggs by the end of our competition will win a special prize. Are you guys ready? Oh yeah. On your mark, get set, go! And they are off. We'll check back with our contestants in a bit to see how their search is going. Until then, let's toss it back to you, Amelia and Caitlin. Thanks, Gabe. In celebration of Earth Day, join Professor Bennington from the Department of Geology, Environment, and Sustainability in the Student Garden to plant spring vegetables and native pollinator plants. This event will take place Friday, April 14th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. No prior registration is required. 
Join the Hofstra Cultural Center Theater and the Department of Geology, Environment, and Sustainability for the empowerment of having a lab of one's own, research on cholera, climate, and human health. This event is presented by the Science Night Live Lecture Series and hosted by University of Maryland Professor Rita Caldwell. This event is being held on Tuesday, April 11th from 1 p.m. to 2.25 p.m. in the Guthard Cultural Center Theater. This event is free and open to the public. Advanced registration is required. The Africana Studies and Department of Global Studies and Geography present a conversation with Henry L. Uma, the author of the memoir From the Village to the World and Back. The presentation will chronicle his life in Kenya and the U.S. This event will take place on Monday, April 17th from 4.20 p.m. to 5.45 p.m. in room 113 Roosevelt Hall. Participants can join in person or on Zoom via the link on the Hofstra events calendar. This event is free and open to the public with no prior registration required. The Muslim Student Association is offering free iftar meals from Zabiha Halal Certified Restaurants in room 246 in the Axon Library from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. RSVP on Get Involved HU to claim your free meal. We here at Hofstra today are so happy to announce that we've been nominated for four Herbie Awards this year. We're running in the category for Best Graphics, Best Live Segment, Best Package, and Best Nonfiction Episode. You can tune in to the Herbies on the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication live stream on May 1st at 8 p.m. to say who takes them home. Don't you hop away. Hofstra today will be right back with the latest national news. You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind and reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around, and I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself, and me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike, and you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves, and all I had to do was be there. has been made after a former president was indicted with 34 felony counts against him. Let's find out who from anchor Crystal Bermudez with our national news. Former President Donald Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts falsifying business records in the first degree. Following an hour-long arraignment hearing yesterday in Lower Manhattan, Trump's defense team stood firm in their belief that the former president did not do anything wrong during his four-year term. He is the first U.S. president to face criminal charges. Trump's primary charges are related to hush money payments made out to adult film actress Stormy Daniels and other women Trump allegedly had intimate relationships with in 2016. In a press conference yesterday afternoon, New York County District Attorney Alvin Bragg emphasized that falsifying any government or business documents is a felony under New York state law. Bragg added, quote, the people of the state of New York alleged that Donald J. Trump repeatedly falsified New York business records to conceal crimes that hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 election. Prosecutors alleged Trump's scheme to identify, purchase, and bury negative information about him his public image and his administration. Despite being officially under arrest in the state of New York, Trump is still eligible to run for president in the 2024 election. After at least 18 people died following a three-day string of tornadoes and thunderstorms that swept through the Midwest and South last week, affected communities are now facing severe thunderstorms and flooding. Seven states are currently affected, including Illinois, Tennessee, and Arkansas. More than 3,000 homes and 2,000 buildings were destroyed after the deadly week of storms. The National Weather Service is currently warning all residents in the Midwest to take shelter for the next 24 hours while the storm passes. Winds are expected to reach speeds up to 80 miles per hour with baseball-sized hail in northern regions of the country. 
The Weather Service is also warning the threat of another series of tornadoes as temperatures begin to warm into spring. Chicago's mayoral election between Cook County Commissioner Brandon Johnson and former Chicago Public Schools Chief Executive Paul Vallis took place last night after a contentious year of campaigning. Johnson proved victorious in this race with 51% of the votes overall. In a poll conducted just two days before the election, Chicago voter voters favored Vallis by only a four-point margin. Vallis's campaign was fairly centric, focusing primarily on voter concerns for public safety, safety and the expansion of the Chicago police force. Johnson's campaign was much more progressive as he vowed to provide more funds for schools and fight for social issues. Johnson's win is a major victory for progressive Chicagoans as he plans to raise taxes, fund social work organizations, and expand sanctuary city policies. Today marks the end of National Public Health Week throughout the week. Hofstra University School of Health Professions and Human Services held multiple events to spread awareness on campus. The week commenced with a 5K run hosted by the Society of Public Health Advocates. Field reporter Ricky Hubert has more details on the event. Hi, I'm Ricky Hubert from Hofstra today, and we are here at the Hofstra Fitness Center to talk all things SOFA 5K. On your mark, get set, go. SOFA is the Society of Public Health Advocates, so we're pretty much like the SGA-led um, student organization for the Public Health Department. So, so far I wanted to do a 5K because typically we started off as a, the kickoff for National Public Health Week. So with um, public health, we focus on advocacy, um, prevention. Um, so we wanted to have this event, of course, preventative, thinking about health-wise, you know, people promoting their health. But we wanted to have a 5K because this way students grad and undergrad are exposed to SOFA, they know what it's like, and then that way potentially if we do have undergrad students, they would want it to possibly someday to pursue um, a Master of Public Health. So um, SOFA's actually worked with the Pride Dome Pantry um, for like the past two years. We actually have a really good partnership with the pantry. Um, we really want to target food insecurity on campus, especially with the dome. So Hofstra has two pantries. Um, there's the Pride Pantry and then the Pride Dome Pantry. So um, we're working with the Dome Pantry and we work with Dr. Barossi, who is the organizer of that. So essentially for today, we had the runners bring a donation item to help um, raise the stock of the Dome Pantry. I think there are two things. Um, first of all, I would like a pantry to be run by students themselves because it's a, it's a pantry for students and um, I would like the students to, to run it because I feel like it's going to have more impact when students are more involved in this kind of initiative. The second thing that I would like to see is half trials and organization to have more um, to notice this kind of issue because I, I feel like there needs to be more attention brought to this kind of issue. It's like a hidden issue on campus and the more we talk about it, that's, that's when we're going to shed more light to this issue. We'd like to extend our deepest thanks to Vanessa, Caitlin and Dr. Barossi for taking time with us today. We'd also like to extend a special thank you to Hofstra Don't Pride Pantry and SOFA for all they do for students here on campus. We look forward to seeing what the rest of National Public Health Week here at Hofstra has to offer. Back to you in the studio. Thank you to field reporter Ricky Hubert for the report. Coming up after the break, we have this week's weather forecast with Ariadne Morales. Thousands of kids start vaping, and I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie, how sketch is me? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. You didn't you, you turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you have to get it trending. Right, backpack kid? Let's do it. First, invite your kid to do the vape talk. Let's try this. All right. Why is he here? Yeah, I got to get it trending, no. honey. Come on. Honey, can we talk? Yeah, what's up? I see a lot of your friends vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk.
spring sure has sprung here at Hofstra. Let's head over to Ariadne Morales for this week's weather. Thanks a million, Caitlin. I'm Ariadne Morales, and this is your five-day weather forecast. Right now, it is a cloudy 55 degrees outside our studio here at the Herbert School. We can expect the cloudy skies to continue for the rest of the day. Temperatures will reach a high of 55 and a low of 50 degrees. Thursday will bring thunderstorms with possible hail and heavy winds later in that day. Might impact your afternoon commute. Temperatures will reach a high of 66 and a low of 48 degrees. Now let's take a look at how the rest of the week will take shape here in Hempstead. On Friday, we can expect mostly cloudy skies with temperatures reaching a high of 61 degrees and a low of 38 degrees. On Saturday, you can expect mostly cloudy skies with a high of 53 and a low of 38 degrees. On Sunday, we will see beautiful sunny skies with temperatures peaking at a high of 52 and a low of 42 degrees. It should be the perfect day for you and your friends to get some relaxation times at Jones Beach. That's all for your five-day weather forecast. I'm Ariadne Morales. Back to you, Amelia and Caitlin. Thanks so much, Ariadne. If you have been on the second floor of CV Star lately, you may have seen something called the Zarb Store in the works. This is a student-managed merchandise store, and their interns were eager to tell us about their experiences working so far. Here's field reporter Nick Costanza with the latest. Hey everyone, it's Nick from Hofstra today, and today I sat down with student interns at the Zarb store, and you're probably wondering why I'm holding this dog. Well, this is Frank, he is the dog of the Zarb store, super cute puppy, but although he's not in the interviews, we did have a great time getting to learn more about these people and what they do here. So, with that, let's take a look. I applied um, knowing that I wanted to do something during my time at Hofstra um, in entrepreneurship. Uh, I always had a passion for it, still do, and I thought that this would be a great opportunity. In terms of being excited for the opportunity, um, I get to essentially help run an entire store and I get an experience that I would not get at an internship. I like how things look and I like having a good storefront that's well organized and very like eye appealing. So I put a lot of prioritization on that. Most importantly, we're trying to target our demographic, which is, well, we have multiple demographics, and I think primarily right now we're focusing on, obviously, our consumer, which is the students that we have currently on campus. Being kind of the front runner of the store, I feel it's a lot of responsibility, but being someone who can handle that responsibility, it makes it a lot of fun. I think that this hoodie is going to be one of the best sellers. My personal favorite is the gray little three-quarter zip. I like the windbreakers and the wind jackets. Those are my favorites. Personally, I really like what I am wearing today. It's the athletic like quarter zip, but also the wind jackets. That about wraps up our feature here on Hofstra today. And I just want to thank everybody at the Zarb School of Business for their time and sitting down with everybody and getting to learn more about them it was such a wonderful time. And once again, I will be here, I will be back, and I might have this hat on after I buy it. So definitely go check out the store. And once again, I'm Nick Costanzo for Hofstra Today. What an amazing opportunity for the students there in the Zarb School. Well, now it's time to check in on Gabe and see how our excellent egg hunt is going. Gabe? Welcome back to our Herbert School egg hunt. Our contestants, Jake and Sarah, are hard at work finding as many eggs as possible. Let's see how they're doing so far. Okay, they have made their way over to the content suite. It seems like Jake is hurriedly looking through the different chairs. Sarah has found her way to the back. Jake is now going all the way around. I hope that he's able to find eggs just looking around. Sarah's taking more of a leisurely place. And you know they say, Slow and steady wins the race. So I think I'm with Sarah on this one. Jake is looking a little frantically going around other students inside the content suite. I wonder how many eggs they have so far. This has really been an interesting uh, practice. Okay, looking at the plants. That's another great one. It is really to my humor they actually did leave some eggs here in studio. But it's okay, we can't win all of them. They're now coming around, picking up, and they're going outside of the content suite. Things are happening all around inside of Herbert School of Communications, but I'm going to give it back to you, Caitlin and Amelia. I know I'm excited to find out who our winner is. Before that, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but stay tuned for our entertainment updates. Please visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug, 
for the kind to climb. Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Let's hear about some excellent entertainment updates happening at Hofstra with Rachel Katz. Next week, the Hofstra Music Department is bringing another exhilarating production to you. The Hofstra Symphony Orchestra, with direction by Adam Glazer, is performing on Friday, April 14th at 8 p.m. The event is located in the Adams Playhouse here on campus and is open to the public. Tickets are free, but advanced registration is required, so make sure to reserve yours before they run out. Speaking of great performances, the Department of Drama and Dance is presenting their newest production, Dyke by Hannah Benitez. The show is described as an exploration of love, sexuality, and sisterhood, and is sure to entertain all who come. Opening night is April 14th, and shows are live until April 23rd in the Black Box Theater. Tickets are free. Hofstra students and staff require no reservation. Advanced registration for outside guests is required. Come to the Spring Faculty Dance Concert Monday, April 17th at 1 p.m., April 27th through 29th at 8 p.m., and April 29th and 30th at 2 p.m. at the John Cranford Adams Playhouse. The concert will feature faculty, choreographers, and special guests. The event is free and open to the public. Outside guests are encouraged to reserve a seat on the Hofstra events calendar. Senior film production students at the Herbert School are hard at work on their thesis film projects. We spoke with three seniors about their production experiences and their filmmaking process. Let's take a look at all they're doing. My film is called Fix It in Post and it's a comedy about an older man named Frank who is trying to get a match on LonelyFish.com and he edits photos of himself which turn to reality. My senior thesis is called Oculus and it's a surrealist short horror about the death of ego. My film was uh... 14 Minutes of Fame, and it's a dark comedy about a former actor who tries to reclaim his success through social media and his insecurities get the best of him. So my pre-production process was pretty heavily involved because I wanted to get as much done ahead of time. There's a lot of moving parts in mind because I wanted to focus more on a very montage -y film because I love editing, hence the title Fix It In Post. Um, locations was the hardest thing that I had to find especially since I was looking for something so specific. But I ended up finding something through advice of other people, which ended up working really well. It was very expensive. Make sure you have a really, really big budget. You need at least 7K to make a senior. Like, don't listen to anyone else. Casting's actually really easy. I started, I put a call out on Backstage back in December. I didn't want to start early because I needed to get, make art and posters and just get everything ready for that. Building a crew and assembling a crew was definitely a lot more difficult than I expected. I, I'm really happy with how it turned out, but we, a lot of that was done in the last few weeks. The more you show up for the people that are working on your crew, the more excited they'll be to be a part of it. And so being able to tell the DP, hey, like I, I've saved a little bit of a budget for you to rent outside equipment. It kind of just gives the respect that you would want on a set to the other people that are working on your set. I was really glad that I got to run my senior with all of my friends. You guys are all great, you're very talented. My favorite part of my production weekend was seeing my storyboard on the camera. It felt like all the effort was paying off with all the crew members that were helping. I can't wait to check those senior films out and I'm wishing them the best of luck in all of their post-production efforts and their capstones. And thank you to Becky, John, and Sakshi for sharing their stories. Now the time has come to reveal the winner of our egg hunting competition. Gabe, how are we looking over there? Our contestants are back from their hunt. And before we announce the winner, can you tell us a little bit about your hunting strategies? You know, I really wanted to embody the egg, right? Mm -hmm. Th thinking of like hide and seek, like where would the egg be? They right. were trying to keep out of plain sight, you know? Okay, thinking like an egg, I like it. For How me, about you? I championed uh, world champion dancer Bella Labou right before this and then interviewed her, asked her what it's like to be a champion and she mm -hmm. gave me some good advice. It's all about preparation and got my eyes ready to, you know, see them. Okay, well thank you both for your hard work here today. I'm excited to announce that our winner is Jake Epstein with 31 eggs. It was a great competition. Here is your special prize. It awesome. is a lovely chocolate Easter bunny. Thank you you so both much. worked so hard, but 
I have to say, congrats, Jake. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to our first ever Hasha Today live egg hunt. Back to you, Caitlin and Amelia. Congrats, Jake. So coming up after this short break, our Pride Sports update with Yao Bonsu. Don't go anywhere. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? Why? My. Bring over to Yao Bonsu with sports. After men's lacrosse breaking a four-game losing streak Saturday, the Pride dominating Monmouth 12-6 in New Jersey. Gerard Kane hit the back of the net four times for Hofstra. That tied a career high. The Georgia native scored his most goals in a game since February of 2022. Meanwhile, goalie Matt Gates matching a career high with 15 saves against Monmouth. Headman Seth Tierney says this is exactly the type of game Gates needed. His numbers haven't been great, but it hasn't been him. It's been all of us, right? And uh, for him to have a game like this, again, I'm hopeful that we can get this air behind us. Max stood strong. Anytime you get 15 saves uh, in a game, you hopefully you can walk out with your goalie uh, with the W. The Pride improved to 3-7 and seven on the year. On the women's side, Hofstra also taking on Monmouth in Jersey, the first ever matchup between the Pride and Hawks in women's lacrosse, and it delivered. A 17-16 overtime heartbreak for the Pride. It was a career day for Katie Kelly. The senior put up five goals and one dime, but it was Cassidy Orban hitting the final blow to put Monmouth on top. The Pride came back from down five goals to force OT. Head coach Shannon Smith says the effort shows a lot about her team. They love each other. They believe in each other. Um, they support one another, and they're really resilient. Um, you know, we got to get on the other side of that where we're not always coming back in the middle of the games. It's, it takes a lot out of you and a lot of energy. Um, but our kids obviously fight. They're fighters. They're warriors out there, um, and just super proud of them. Next up is Delaware on Saturday. That game is at 12. Finally, Hofstra baseball shut out by Rutgers 5-0. The Pride did hold the Scarlet Knights to only two runs through seven innings, but Rutgers came back storming in the eighth inning with a three-run inning. Penn Seeley started at the mound for Hofstra, his first of the season. Meanwhile, a couple of members of the Pride are going streaking. Steve Harrington got on base for game number 20 in a row. Will Kennedy had his on-base stretch ended at 23. Next up for Hofstra's conference play, the Pride take on Charleston on Friday for the first game of a three-game series. Thanks, yeah. Well, it looks like it's time to hop out of here and enjoy this wonderful weather. Thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Hofstra Today, and special thanks to Sarah Eng and Jake Epstein for participating in today's egg hunt. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and our TikTok at Hofstra Today for fun video updates. Until next time, that's all at and around Hofstra Today.